So, um, so I determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. I, I determine the magnitude and direction of the equilibrium of the equilibrium. Okay. So this is what I will expect from you. The first thing I want you to do is to help me resolve all these forces, F1, F2, F3 into components, vertical and horizontal components. All right, so do, do, do that for me. Resolve each. This is F3, 10. F3 is 10, yes. 10 Newton. And, and F2 is 8. F2 is 8. Thank you. So resolve each one into vertical and horizontal components. And then let's continue. Okay, I'm sure you are true. So, resolving F1 each component, you see, F1 has an absolute vertical component and zero horizontal component. So, the vertical and um, the horizontal component is zero. The vertical component is 20. Now, it is with the direction of negative y angle. So, minus 20. So, the components are 0 and negative 20 Newton. Please, let me see by hand those of you who got this. Okay. All right, nice one. I can see. Um, all right, yo, and you are fine. Let's look at F2. F2, two ways we can resolve it to the x or to the y. 
if we take it to the x, x will be 8 cos 30. Y will be 8 sine 30. If we take it to the x, to the y axis, then x will be 8 sine 60 and 8 cos 60. Let me see my hands, those of you who got this. Okay. That is good. And it's, it's a positive value because, okay, this force has to light within the first quadrant. It's within this quadrant. So it means that this is equal to sine 60 is root 3 on 2. Sine 60 is root 3 on 2. So we have four. The angle that is facing the x, is it 30 or 60? Okay. Okay, so 8 sine 60 is 4 root, root 3. And this is 4. Of course, you can also change it to that amount. Now let's look at what we got for F3. F3 to the to the y axis is 45. Uh, to the x is 45, to the y is also 45. So what can we resolve it? This will be 10, 10 cos of 45, 10 sine of 45. Now X is along the negative X as a so minus. Y is Y is along the positive Y and so it's a positive. And so we have cos 45 is root 2 on 2. So negative 5 root 2. And 5 root 2. So here, whichever way you look at it. The value will be the same because this is 45, this is 45. So both ways will do the same thing, right? So let me see those of you who got this for F3. All right. Okay. Now is that 40 or 45? This is 45. Okay. 45 to the x axis. Now, after resolving each force, we are looking for the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. After, after doing this, how do we determine the resultant force? You sum up all the forces in one direction, and you sum up all the forces in the other direction. So we have x direction and then y direction. So you sum up all the components of the forces in both x and y. That is what you, you do next. So summation of fx. So here we are talking about f1 of x plus F2 of X plus F3 of X. Okay, so what is the X component we got for one? It is zero. So zero plus X component for two. We have, we have four roots of three. So four, root 3 plus x component for 3. We have minus 5 root 2. So this is minus 5 root of 2. Please change everything into decimal for your problem. 4 root 3 in decimal minus 5 root 2 in decimal. 
and then give me the final answer. Negative zero point one four two nine. Negative zero point one four two nine. Three. What's it? Newton. Mm -hmm. is, 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 that, is that correct? I need some somebody to also confirm a second question. Yes. Okay. If it's confirmed, then we can go ahead. Then we also look for summation f y, which is f one of y plus f two of y plus f three. Of one. So what is F1 of Y? This is negative 20 plus F2 of Y. F2 of Y is 4 plus F3 of Y. We have 5 root of two. So this is minus 16 plus five root of two, which is also equal to five root of two minus 16. Mm -hmm. Negative what? Negative 8.9289. 8.9289. Nine to eight nine. Okay, so let's make it negative eight point nine two nine. New thing. All right. Please, is every everyone following? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, I want to use the down part of the board. That's why I'm adjusting the screen. Now, after adjusting summation of all values along y and along x, you draw draw your x y axis. Look at whatever you got for summation x. Is it positive or negative? Is it negative? Is it positive or negative? Negative. Oh, if it's a negative, then it means that the summation x is along this direction, it's along the negative x direction. So we have summation f of x along this direction whose magnitude is 0 0.1429. Then summation f of y is also a negative, meaning it's along negative y axis or, or along the south. So we have summation, let me bring it here, summation f of y given as 8.929 Newton. So we have two vectors. One one in this direction, another one in this direction. And they are perpendicular. One is due, due west, and the other is due south. So if you want the resultant, you have to realign their direction because from how, how it looks, we have x in this direction, um, x in this direction, y in this direction. The two directions doesn't follow any sense of order, order limits. So we have to realign their direction using equal vectors. Okay. So I create an equal vector of this, put it on the head of this vector. And when I do that, this is what I'll have. Once, once this is equal to this, then they need to have the same magnitude and direction. So the direction of this is this. And so this has to go the same way. 
the magnitude must be the same and the two vectors must be parallel. So if this is 8.929, this will also be 8.929. Now look at this. After doing this, this is going here, this is going here. And so the resultant will be drawing uh, a vector from the tail of this to the head of this. So this will be the direction of the resultant force. This will be the direction of this, the resultant of this like this. Please, are we fine? Yes, yes please. Once this is perpendicular, this will also be perpendicular. So we have, we have a kind of right angle triangle. And because of this, we have to use Pythagoras theorem to find the resultant. All right, let me clean the top end of the board so I can use it, okay? Open your eyes, because when you finish, I'll give you an assignment to do it and present. <laughs> so, because of this relationship, we can say that then the resultant R squared. The square of the resultant must be equal to the summation of the squares of the other two sides. So this is equal to summation Fx squared plus summation Fy squared. Therefore, R is equal to square, the square root of, let's put in our values. Summation Fx is 0 0.1429. So this square plus summation Y is 8.929 square. Please put them together for me. What did you get for R? Square this two and then take the square root. 8.930. 8.930. Eight Give it to me in two decimal places. 8.930. Nine three. Newton. So this is that. Resultant. So determine the magnitude and the direction of the resultant. We have the magnitude of the resultant. Please, all is well. All is well. Akofala, Vinan, Deborah, um, and, and, and the rest. Now, direction. Looking at what we have, let me adjust the screen. Please, if you are writing, I'll come back to it. So, looking at what we have, this is the direction of the resultant, FOC. So, the first thing I need to do is that I have to determine this angle, theta. And because I have this, I have this, and even have the resultant, I can use any appropriate trig ratio to find the, uh, the angle theta. Because I have all the sides of the right angle triangle. So maybe I'm a friend of, I'm a friend of um, tan. So I want to use tangent. So the term of this angle theta is equal to the opposite side, which is 8.929 divided by 
divided by the adjacent, which is 0 0.1429. Please take this ratio for me. 8.929 divided by this one. I go for that. You have to talk to me. You can. Nine. Three. One four zero nine. Pardon. Is it one four zero nine? Zero point one four two nine. So eight point nine two nine divided by zero point one four two nine. Just give me that ratio. Sixty two point four eight four. You are giving me the angle I guess. Let's let's be systematic. Just give me this ratio first. This, this divide by that is equal to sixty two point four eight four. Eight point this, this divided by this is sixty sixty two. Yes. I don't mean the angle. Give me this divided by this first. Yes, this 8.929 divided by 0 0.1429. Yes. Oh, somebody should confirm that for me because the value is so big for me. Yes, it's 8.4. This is 2.4. Let me also confirm. Wow. Oh, okay. Then let's take the hand inverse of this. This is a very huge value for me. Mr. Dia, the hand inverse to be 89.082. So this the hand inverse of this is 89.0. Is that all right? Six ten inverse of sixty two. Okay, all right. So please, so when you take the ten inverse of the ten, it's called eighty nine degrees, and eighty nine degrees is this angle. Is this angle? Okay. If this is eighty nine degrees, what would be this angle? One degree. That, that, that is one. Good. One. Good. Now let's look at how you take the direction. If I'm if I'm here, if I'm I'm standing at the y axis to locate the direction of the resultant, then I have to turn through this angle. Okay, so to turn through this angle to locate the, um, the direction of the result, and then it will be equal to 180 plus one, giving me 181 degrees. And then the direction of the result. This is the direction of the result. Please, are, are we okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. So we have determined the magnitude and then the direction of the resultant force. Let's move on to I. Determine the magnitude and direction of the equilibrium. Now, what is equilibrium? The equilibrium. It's a force that ensures that the net force acting on the system is equal to 
zero. So the equilibrant force, or what we simply call as the equilibrant, is a force that ensures that the net force acting on the system is equal to zero. Okay. So when the equilibrium comes in, the total force acting on the system must be equal to zero. And so two ways, the equilibrium and the resultant always have the same magnitude. So if the magnitude of the resultant is 8.93, the equilibrium would also have uh, a magnitude of 8.93. Now, what is the direction of the equilibrium? The equilibrium is always opposing the resultant because when the equilibrium comes in, the total force on the, on the whole system or the net force must be equal to zero. So it is. The equilibrium is anti I can't hear you well. Is it hello? Mr. Babi, the white one. Yeah, please can you start over? Can you repeat what you said? We didn't hear what you said. You hear. Please. But can you can you hear me now? Yes, yes. please. Okay. What I'm yes, saying, please. What I'm saying is that we are looking at the I I question. And the I I question requires that we determine the magnitude and direction of the equilibrium. Equilibrium. Okay. Now I'm defining what an equilibrium is. The equilibrium is anti resultant. The equilibrium is always opposing the resultant. That's why I said it is anti-resultant. Now, when the equilibrium comes into the system, the net force acting on the system is equal to, must be equal to zero. When the equilibrium comes into the system, the net force acting on the system must be equal to zero. So, if the resultant has a magnitude of x, x newton. The equilibrium must also have the same magnitude. Okay. Now, if the direction of the resultant is u naught, the equilibrium direction must be u sub because when it comes in, the net force must be zero. Are you okay? Yes. So that's the work of the equilibrium. So from whatever we got, we got the resultant force to be 8.93. The equilibrium must have the same value, 8.93. The equilibrium is always opposing the resultant. So if the resultant is due north, the equilibrium must be due south. So let, let's look at how we determine the direction of the equilibrium. For, for, for its magnitude, you just realize that it will have the same magnitude as the resultant. But the direction is what we need to battle with now. Look at this is the direction of the resultant. And we got um, 181 degrees from Y. So if the resultant is going this way, the equilibrium must go the opposite way. So resultant in this direction, equilibrium in this direction, the medium equilibrium in the opposite direction. So look at something. This angle, we have this angle as um, 89 degrees. 
it means this angle would also be 89 degrees, isn't it? Yes. Because of opposite, uh, vertically opposite angles. If this is 89, we got 89. So this must also be 89. Are we fine? Yes. Go. Now, if this is 89, then what will be this angle? One. One degree. Go. So from the y axis, that it means from the y axis, the equilibrant must uh, would exert at an angle of one degree. Then from the x axis, the equilibrant would be 89 degrees. And now the direction of the equilibrant. And convert conventionally, we always take the angular measurement from the north or y axis. So we'll move 189 degrees. Whereas the direction of the resultant, sorry, we'll move it one degree, whereas the direction of the resultant is 181. Are we fine? Yes, please. Yes. So that is the whole story about resultant and equilibrium. Okay, so let's. I think we have the we have the solution. Let's let me check what we got for as our final answer for the resultants. We had eight point nine three. Yes, the answer is eight point nine three. Yes, as we all, we have, and then the direction of the resultant is um eighty nine point one. 89.1. So we rounded up, rounded it up. Go. Then I point in the question on equilibrium. So that's it. Let me give you one question to try, okay? Or, or what do you think? I think so. Yeah, very important. Very important. Mr. Gia. Hello, Mr. Gia. Go ahead. That's what I'm listening. Mr. Gia, please. So the direction of the resultant force to the x axis is 89. To the yes. Mr. Bia. Hello. And to the Y. And to the Y, this is one. One degree, yes. Okay. So, Mr. Bia, if you're writing conclusion, what will you write? About the direction. Yes, please. You see, I said conventions accepted. The accepted norm is that we always state if it's a bearing and force the vector quantity. So angular measurement is always taken from the norm. That is why I I took my direction from y and got this. Okay, but you see, if you are presenting it to the x axis, you have to explain. Oh, direction is 89 degrees from the x axis. Okay, then if you are following conventions, where well, if there's 89, yeah. then you have to from the both ways, both ways are a way of representing direction. So when it comes to direction, we are not so straight on. I just I will look at. Let me say the sense in what you have done and then mark it as such, right? Yes, please. Okay. All right, so we have 
we have um, three forces This is 80 Newton. And this is 45 Newton acting at 30 degrees to the X angles. Then we have 30 Newton acting at 25 degrees to the other X angles. Find the magnitude and direction of the I resultant I equilibrium. So this is the problem of the evening. Note that this is acting directly on the y-axis, okay? There's a problem of the hip. Mr. Gia, please, is it 25 degrees? This is, and this is 25 degrees, yes. Thank you. Thank you, too. Let's get right to this step. So find the magnitude and direction of the resultant and then the equilibrium. Okay. So I'm giving you, um, I think eight minutes will do. Okay, so I'm going for commercial break. I'll, 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 I'll see you after the, after eight minutes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Mr. G, I can't. You can't see. No, oh, please. You can see. You can see. Mr. D, I can't see the angle on the right side. On the right side, that's 30. This is a, um, a force of magnitude 45, angle 30, a force of 30 Newton at an angle 25, and then a force of 80 Newton acting along the y axis. Okay. Okay. 